So I'm in uh, Penguin Computing's booth with Don Becker, and uh, I'm going to let Don tell us about some of the new things Penguin's doing, and then I'm, I'm going to ask him some uh, tough questions. Uh, the uh, biggest thing we're introducing t today at the show is Penguin On Demand, and that's Clustering On Demand, a cloud-based service of providing high-performance computing as an uh, online service not a virtualized system, a virtualized single node as you would find with uh, Amazon EC2, but instead a high performance computing platform available by the compute hour. And that ties in with another part of our product, which is an extension of our previous cluster system to doing dynamic full install provisioning combined with our very lightweight provisioning in, in our earlier products. So that, that's something I'm starting to refer to as Cluster 3.0, the dynamic provisioning. And um, the, the idea was Cluster 1.0 was the pile of Red Hat CDs, and 2.0 was more of the, the um, uh, image-based systems. Now, I know Skill kind of circumvented all that and got the 3.0 first. And uh, I, th I think that's one way I'm trying to explain it to, to, to people the differentiation. Well, what we did with our earlier cluster system, we did dynamic caching of libraries and executables based on exactly what was required. So we were gradually building up a distribution of only the elements required on the compute nodes to run the, the compute tasks. With our new hybrid system, we can have very lightweight dynamically provisioned nodes mixed with an increasingly heavyweight systems up to a full install as a compute node. And we can also select a dynamic full install just for a single application and then move on to a different kind of full install for the next application. And that is the core technology of our on-demand service, our online service, cloud-based HPC on-demand. And is this something you're starting to hear from customers they're interested in, is the on-demand? Uh, there is a huge pent-up demand for basically clusters available temporarily or being able to put their application out in the web, especially when we combine it with expertise, having already installed applications up and ready to run. Okay, well, I, I want to shift gears a little bit, and, and I was at a party Monday night, and there was a guy on stage that looked a little bit like you, and I, <coughs> I, I can't say... I hope he was good looking. Well, I can't say what he did on camera, but I, I just want to... Was that you? Well, we held the Beowulf Bash, the 11th Annual Beowulf Bash. Uh, we've been doing this for many, many years, and uh, it, it keeps getting bigger year after year. We had close to 500 people at the party, and I believe everybody had a good time. We keep it a multi-vendor sponsored party, a community party, where people can plan, plan their show out and uh, catch up with old friends before the show really gets underway. Very successful. Happy everybody could show up and enjoy the beer. Well, I'm, I know it's been, been uh, running re real well recently. I know in some of the earlier years and some of the other events, the, uh, the planner, uh, organizer, um, kind of dropped the ball. And um, particularly the uh, cigar event they used to have, uh, from what I understand, uh, things didn't go too well several times. And uh, I, I, don't, I don't know whatever happened to that guy, but he got pushed out, and the new management team is doing a crack job. That's well, I didn't see if there was any uh, cigar smoking that went on. Uh, here in Portland, it's a little difficult to, to have a cigar inside or apparently outside. But uh, I, I'm sure that there was a little bit of cigar and scotch uh, when they snuck out the, there, out the side. There, there could have been. It was good. So... Um, <laughs> Uh, anything else? Uh, any observations about the show this year? Well, the big thing at the show this year is GPU com computing, uh, using very high-end graphics cards to do computation. And this might be the next wave of commodity computing. The uh, graphics market, the, the high-end gamer and visualization market paid for the development of those uh, high-performance graphics cards. So it, just like commodity computing was driven by the rest of the business market paying for the server class machines and then we adapted them for HPC the same thing seems to be happening in the GPU computing realm the graphics card development was originally paid for by the broader market and the HPC folks are now using them as high-performance accelerators 
for commodity machines. Uh, the big news in the show here, I think, is that they're becoming much more programmable and new HPC tuned hardware is arriving, especially when it comes to double precision floating point, which was a traditional weak spot for the graphics cards. So that seems to be the next big trend here. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing as well. And, um, you know, you think back, it's like really we have Grand Theft Auto to thank for pushing HPC to the next level. And Grand Theft Auto uh, leading to design of automobiles, yes. Yeah, so, and, and the way I see it is, uh, um, in a way, it's almost a convergence. And the, the things we try and model in HPC actually at some, some point will make pretty good video games. Uh, and it's amazing that that hardware is uh, so usable already. Yeah. So, um, okay, well, we're going to head out, and it's good to see you again. And um, Very good to see you again, Doug. And, um, and I hope to see you uh, next year at the Beowulf Bash. And I, I'm thinking of attending. I've heard it's a good event. Yeah. And uh, the uh, and maybe sneak in a few cigars. In. Yeah, well, we'd like to do that as well. I think uh, New Orleans is a little more cigar-friendly than uh, Portland is. And I believe for next year, we're going to have uh, another Monday night event and hope the listeners out there, will, if they're coming to supercomputing, will be able to come to the Beowulf Bash and catch up with uh, everybody you've seen and heard about. Okay. Thanks, Don. Thanks.